So hello everyone and welcome to this virtual edition of the FEMZ 2020 conference, Taking a Bite Out of Ocean Education. My name is Caitlin Rivera. I am the president-elect of FEMZ and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. For those of you who don't know, this is not exactly how we do our normal conference presentations. None of us here at FEMZ are Zoom professionals, so we really appreciate your understanding if we do happen to run into any technical issues on our end during this session. The presentation will be about 40 to 45 minutes with time for questions at the end for a total of about an hour. Please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box on your screen throughout the presentation. At the end of the presentations, I will read out your questions for Grace to answer. Now, without any further ado, I am pleased to introduce our presenter for this session, Grace Burmester. Grace Burmester is an academic advisor and recruiter for the Marine Sciences major at the University of Florida School of Forest Resources and Conservation. Uh, UF offers the number two best value in public college education, plus the benefits of a small school with the resources of a top 10 university. Grace is the UF CALS present Professional Advisor of the Year and would love to talk with you and your students about their marine education. So let's give a warm welcome to Grace. And Grace is already sharing her screen. So whenever you're ready, Grace, we are ready for you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the University of Florida's Marine Sciences curriculum and some pathways to admission. So uh, just to recap, Grace Burmester. Um, so I actually serve four different undergraduate majors here at the University of Florida. So I have Marine Sciences, geomatics, natural resource conservation, and forest resources and conservation. So UF is in a unique position to offer this major. Um, so I'm gonna cover a bit about that and the demand for the major, um, what we've done in the past and kind of where we're going with it, some of the benefits of our marine program, and then some admissions considerations. So I wanna start with Sea Grant. Um, so if you're not familiar with Sea Grant, Sea Grant is a national program that supports coastal and Great Lake communities through research, extension, and education. And so they're in different states. And so the Florida version of Sea Grant is a partnership between the Florida Board of Education, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, 16 different Florida universities and marine land labs, and Florida's citizens and governments. So Sea Grant utilizes research expertise of more than 800 coastal and ocean scientists at the state's 16 major universities and research labs. And Sea Grant is an integral part of the Institute of Food and Agricultural Life Sciences, or IFAS, at UF. UF is one of the nation's leading land grant universities. It's also a sea and air grant university. And Sea Grant supports research, education, and extension to coast, conserve coastal resources and enhance economic opportunities for the people of Florida. So Sea Grant's extension education and outreach programs are done in partnership with the UF Extension and coastal counties of Florida. So every coastal county has a marine agent that is connected to the University of Florida. Specifically in Sea Grant, there are 38 agents and specialists in that program. So our major here is actually being offered in um, two different colleges. Um, so we have an offering in liberal arts and sciences, and they have an emphasis on biology and physical sciences. And then we have the offering in agricultural and life sciences, which has an emphasis on ecology, conservation, and management. So it's a collaboratively administered marine science major. It's multidisciplinary and broad in scope. Every student takes courses across the fields of biology, chemistry, geology and physics, of marine estuarine and coastal environments, as well as conservation and management of marine resources. The interdisciplinary approach allows students to tailor curriculum that suits their interests and or career goals, emphasizing physical or biological sciences in class or the field tracks of ecology, conservation and management in CALS. So I specifically work in CALS um, and so 
everything that I'm saying, I'm kind of representing their side, but I just want to kind of put that out there that like formally they have their own academic advisors. Um, and so I'm really representing our side of the program. There are a lot of acronyms out there and IFA is kind of fitting into everything. Um, it can get confusing. So I kind of want to just go over the structure a little bit. Um, so this is me here. I'm in the School of Forest Resources and Conservation. And so we talked about Sea Grant and IFAS. And so IFAS has three different branches. And so we have research extension and then the education academic side of IFAS would be the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. So our academic majors kind of go through that chain of command. Equivalently, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is like the other side of the major's home. Um, and so they function very similarly in how they kind of fit under the University of Florida, but we also fit under IFAS. And so my school has three different programs. Um, we have fisheries, aquatic sciences, forest resource conservation, and geomatics. Um, the name of the school is not very inclusive and representative of all three of those programs. Um, there is a name change in process that plan to have that be more representative of they are really three equal kind of footed programs in our school. And so our CALS Marine Sciences major fits under our fisheries and aquatic sciences program. And so that's where a lot of the development is happening. Um, the other colleges version, class version of marine science major is kind of coming directly out of biology and geology. So there are a few differences between the two different versions of the majors. Um, so just kind of want to highlight some of those. Um, so CALS, my version of major, um, has about 105 current students. Um, and the class version has 27 students currently. Now this seems kind of different, but the, some of that is just based off of what students are really interested in. And so we're kind of getting a lot of those students that are really interested in the conservation management side of fisheries and marine, um, rather than the biological or physical side. Um, some of this also has to do with the structure of the colleges themselves. So our college does academic advising professionally, which is what my title, my role is, um, by the major, by the program. So I'm specifically working with those four majors. Um, there are two of us in our school, but all of those students are always directly contacting us as individuals. We're located in the same places at their classrooms. Um, so it's kind of easier access, more of an intimate feel. The class version of academic advising is a centralized system. So there's one big office on campus, all the different majors go there, um, and they can be serviced by a number of different individuals. Um, so they have a lot more things that they can kind of offer in that format because um, they're a bigger unit, uh, but it kind of takes away some of the personal connection with someone. Um, and if you're not familiar with academic advising, we are kind of the first stop for students. Uh, we help them along their academic path um, what courses should they register for if they're having any questions about like how long till I graduate? There's a bunch of different forms that somebody has to sign. Um, and so we kind of play that role with them. Um, so that easy access to us is something a lot of students really appreciate. Both of the majors have a requirement of faculty advising um, and the structure of how we do that faculty advising is different. Um, so in our college, uh, we have students that they choose which faculty advisor they would like to work with. So it's on the responsibility of students to reach out to our faculty members and they can pick anybody in the school, but they're probably going to pick from that fisheries aquatic sciences program. Um, and so they reach out, they should be evaluating if this faculty member is similar to their career goals. Um, obviously they may not be somebody doing exactly what they wanna do, but someone that has that expertise to lend into building the curriculum that is going to be the best for their career goals. It's also a personal relationship. Uh, we are asking these faculty members to mentor these students. So some of that personal experience of just, you know, do you feel like you click with this person? Is this someone you want to take career advice from? Um, we want to give students the choice of kind of fitting that in. In the contrary, the class version is a little bit smaller. Um, so they have a departmental coordinator in each of their departments, biology and geology, um, and they basically handle all of the students. Um, so there's a lot of consistency there. Um, choosing from electives is very standardized, um, but the students don't have kind of the choice of who to approach to be that faculty advisor. 
the colleges themselves also have some very different requirements. Um, so every major that is in a college has to go by these requirements. Um, so in our college, um, agricultural life sciences has oral written economic requirements, comes out to be about nine credits a student has to do. Um, the class college has two foreign language courses and all of their majors have 18 credits of outside of the major field of study requirement. Um, so students may kind of really pick one version over the other for any of these reasons. Um, and so we've kind of just seen how things are settling out um, between the two tracks of the major. So a little more specific about our program. Um, so under the School of Forest Resource Conservation, we have the program um, Fisheries Aquatic Sciences or FAS. Um, so the graduate or the academic options um, are kind of laid out here. Um, so we have an undergraduate marine sciences major, and then we have a fisheries aquatic sciences minor. Uh, graduate students, we have a master's of science, master's in fisheries aquatic science, and a PhD in FAS. They are also offering an online master's of fisheries aquatic sciences and online graduate certificates, kind of continuing education um, and qualifications for people. So this is the academic component of it, but because we're in IFAS, faculty also have research and extension as part of their uh, position typically. So um, FAS faculty and personnel assist private landowners, public agencies with coastal planning, non-native and invasive species, marine and freshwater fisheries, habitat improvement, water quality and restoration. They also assist industries associated with shellfish, finfish, and other aquatic organisms. So we have about 50 faculty and 88 courtesy or emirates faculty and about 100 staff. And so that is in comparison to 350 undergraduate and 250 graduate students. Um, so full-time faculty have about a one to 12 ratio of student faculty. Um, and so that's where we kind of go with our saying that the school offers number two best value in public college education, plus the benefits of a small school, but all within the resources of a top 10 university. So a little bit about the demand for the degree. Um, so as I've said, every coastal county has a marine agent connected to UF and a lot of our state population is living in these coastal counties. Uh, we know that more and more people are moving to Florida and so we expect to see a demand and increase in these areas. And the connection between the health and sustainability of our coastlines, coastal ecosystems and the coastal economy is really strong. Um, in terms of economic impact, more than 440,000 jobs are directly created by or indirectly supported by ocean resource use in Florida. The ocean economy contributes more than 35 billion to Florida's economy, which is about 5% of the state's GDP. And the state's tourism, construction, and fisheries industries are all tied to aspects of ocean and coastal resources. And so we're working with stakeholders that are seeing the need for students to have this kind of background. Um, they're seeing that there's more jobs out there and they need more qualified students to fulfill these positions. We're also seeing the demand from our students. Um, so this was kind of developed out of um, building the FAS program um, further uh, and then just students here not really having any opportunity that directly fed to some of their career aspirations. Um, so marine sciences major was kind of born out of that here at UF. Um, it's been in high demand. We've had a lot of students taking it up on it. Um, we have seen that it is attracting high performing students. And so a number of these students are going on to grad school, um, vet school, and kind of going out and getting careers in these. Um, the, our marine science students are very typically high active in like research and involvement while they're here as well. So typically students that are coming to us, um, they may know that they wanna work with marine, but they're not 100% sure what that looks like, what they want it to be. Um, so how I like to talk about it with them is kind of the different levels or areas that they could think about um, starting in. Um, so if we talk about um, funding and getting jobs, um, there's a lot of things that have to do with government and municipalities. So you may start uh, very small at a local coastal um, government, you could do a water management district, um, 
go all the way up to state, national. A lot of times it has to do with funding and kind of where grants are coming from and so therefore like where's their job opportunities. Um, so students are open to that side of things that can give them a lot of options and kind of where they want to move with things as well. Um, but a lot of students are also interested in um, nonprofits. They may be interested in starting their own business, interested in environmental consulting, working in the private sphere, lots of um, jobs and opportunities there as well. And so students can kind of think about they're getting a tool chest of different sort of skills here, and they can apply those to all sorts of different things. Um, and so students want to make sure that there are jobs out there for them, uh, but they also like the flexibility that, you know, they really can transition to a lot of different places as kind of the economy shifts. So we always know students are very interested in these points. Um, so current entry level salaries are typically ranging um, from 35 to 70,000 in a marine science field. And the job growth in many of these fields is growing nationally. And so we expect this to grow by about 10% in the next decade. All right, so our major here at UF specifically, and so these are the student learning outcomes that we have set for the major. I'm really focusing on the terminologies, concepts, methodologies, and theories that students have sound science background in these areas. Uh, we also want them to think critically and be able to apply that thinking um, out into their scientific research, focusing on the ethical behaviors of doing science research, and then how they communicate this knowledge um, to their coworkers and out to the public. So this major has been offered in an interdisciplinary studies major with a specialization in marine sciences, which began in 2012. Um, we have now been approved to be a full-fledged major, kind of with the proof of concept from this interdisciplinary studies portion. Um, so just a side note, I know that we have some FEMSI um, that are alum of our programs, and a lot of people went through the natural resource conservation major before this major um, in the interdisciplinary studies was an option. Um, so just last year, we have changed that track as well, um, that now there's a better track that allows freshwater aquatic interest there. Um, so that major kind of is feeding into this marine science major. A lot more courses are being offered for students in this. And so additional to uh, kind of the, the numbers that we're seeing of students and high interest in this, we've also been seeing that the interdisciplinary studies version of major attracted a high proportion of minority and female students. And so this is helping our school's diversity. And um, we see that, you know, it's kind of across the board and thing that students are interested in. And so we have high hopes that this will continue that trend in the future. Um, so we have an alumni survey that was planned for the spring. Um, unfortunately, we did not actually get to do that survey yet. Uh, but this I just wanted to share because it shows kind of the nature of we really want to keep evaluating this. We want to keep making it better. Um, we are going to get input from students. We're going to get input from stakeholders. I'd um, love to hear you all's thoughts as well. Um, but we want to know that this major is preparing students for their career. Um, and so we see that being in areas of just the scientific knowledge, quantitative research methods, policies, economics understanding, um, general knowledge, technical skills. Um, I've heard from a number of different students that they like show up for their first internship or job um, and like they already know how to back a boat into the water. It's just a little thing, but it gives them that confidence boost and it can be something that sets them apart um, and some of that hands-on active learning that they've gotten from our program. Um, so students are really appreciating kind of the skill set of it as well. But along with having those skills and scientific knowledge, they have to be ready to apply that. Um, so really that creative problem solving, um, being able to communicate well and being able to function as a part of a team are really all put into the curriculum. And so students are prepared to actually do these things when they're out on a job or a field site. So the actual structure of the marine sciences major, um, the class and CALS tracks were developed in parallel. They're very complementary. Uh, the curriculum provides core scientific, scientific and quantitative skills necessary for success. Lower division courses are building on a strong foundation in basic science and math, and upper division courses provide opportunities for specialization. Um, so the first two years, students are going to focus on general education courses and the prerequisites that are needed to go into the major. 
Um, and then at the junior and senior level year, they get to sort of specialize in. Um, and so we'll talk more about the core and the approved electives. So these are the marine science major prerequisites. So every major at UF has different um, prerequisite courses that students are working on during those first times. These are the same courses that if a student wants to transfer into the university, they have to have these done first. And um, so between the two versions of the major, um, a lot of them are the same. So we have oceanography, calculus, chem one and two in lab, and bio one and two in lab. Where we differ is on the physics. And so this is kind of based off of that understanding of what students are going to go into. Um, and so the class version has more physics required than the CALS version. Um, so we will take any three or uh, any one course out of these three options. Um, so we have the applied physics option as well as physics one and physics with calculus, where class is specifically looking for the upper level physics, physics one or physics one with calc, and also the physics two versions of those as well. So these are the core courses. Um, so this is required, all students have to take the core um, and this is kind of the foundation of um, consistency throughout the majors. Um, so you can see some of them are the same between the two versions of the majors. Um, students in CALS complete upper division core concentrating on biological and ecological marine science essentials, also giving students critical understanding of statistics and economics integrated into marine science and resource management. And these can include courses with resource management, human dimensions, conservation, and quantitative population assessment. Students in class are completing upper division core integrated with physical and biological science, math, and engineering. So these are what we call the approved electives. So there's a list of courses um, that students have that the, they are under approved electives for either version of the major. And so students work with their faculty advisor to determine which ones of the courses listed here are the best fit for them. Um, so this is where I don't know much about the class version of their approved electives list, um, but they're requiring 12 credits. Um, and you can see kind of the departments that they are taking from are again in that physical, geological kind of side of courses. Our electives list, uh, students are required to take 18 credits. Uh, we pull from fisheries, aquatic sciences, ecology, vet med, wildlife, uh, natural resource conservation, and zoology, primarily for our uh, approved elective list. And um, so we break it into these five categories and students can work with their faculty advisor if it makes sense to kind of be more generalist, take a couple out of each category, or if they really want to focus in onto like one category more in particular. Um, so this is where we lean heavily on our faculty expertise of what is going to make a student competitive, what is going to give them kind of the skill set they need in order to do what they want to do. Um, and so students can really kind of utilize that and go with that from with the faculty advising. So altogether, uh, CALS requires students to have 60 total credits. So students will add up their core approved electives and then planned electives and together that has to equal 60 credits. Um, so upper division is anything that's 3000, 4000 level at the university. Um, and so this gives them a lot of flexibility. Um, some students will utilize this opportunity to add on a minor. Um, maybe they want to focus into communication or policy or law. Um, some students do zoology or wildlife. Um, we also have students that like want to do art or other things that can fit well and they kind of have communicated that with their faculty advisor. And so they've kind of developed this plan for them. Um, Students don't have to do a minor. Um, some students just plan to take a bunch of more FAS courses, um, and so that works as well. Um, but altogether, we have a 60 credit requirement kind of officially for the major. The class version has those 18 credits external to the major focus, um, so students have to kind of fit that into their degree as well. So one of the things that everybody's always excited to learn about is the scuba options. So our, many of our students are interested um, in getting scuba certified and they're utilizing the driving or diving instruction here at the university. Um, so UF does the National Association of Underwater Instructors courses. Um, and so this is a picture here of our Florida pool. 
this is where students actually go. Um, there's equipment lockers there. And so this is where our courses are held. And um, they do a bunch of trips as well um, to kind of get students out in the elements. But the like instructional portions are down here on main campus. So the first uh, step with the scuba instruction is open water scuba. Um, if students already have that, or if they would prefer to go get that from a local dive shop, um, they're always welcome to do that. They just have to have proof of open water certification in order to take the next sequence of courses. Um, so this is where we actually start counting the credits for students is typically advanced and scientific diver. Um, these are taught together um, and students can take up to two courses and six credits worth um, towards their approved electives list. Um, and so this is most typically what students want, most typically what students need kind of for their career goals. Um, so the instruction includes rescue diver, nitrox, first aid, and CPR. Um, this is really what students need in order to be on scientific dives, um, some of the career paths if they want to do surveys, um, join scientific organizations, this is what they need and they just then need to keep up those credentials. Um, so a lot of students aren't necessarily going beyond this, um, but some students do want to, and then this would be considered kind of external addition to the 60 major credits they're required to do for the major. Um, so people want to continue on to be a research dive master. Um, you have to have the same uh, qualifications for the scientific diver, um, but they would take additional courses um, that are offered here, and then they would log those additional hours and skills. So we have kind of just transitioned our interdisciplinary studies major directly into the marine sciences major, um, but we are looking at ways that we could continue to improve the program in the future. Um, so we have had a number of new faculty join the FAS program, um, and so there's exciting universities been growing, um, getting more lines, and so with new faculty, they may have new areas of expertise, new networking opportunities, and the new courses that they may want to teach. Um, so we are open to that and kind of seeing how that may develop in the next couple of years um, and that we can expand the program in that way as well. We've also seen that we have about a quarter to a third of our students that are actually in a pre-vet track. So we are not officially listed as a pre-vet major with the university. In order to be a pre-vet tr um, listed track, you have to require all of the courses to go on to vet school. We do not require that. Um, students have the opportunity to fit those in, into those approved and planned electives. Um, but because it's not a requirement, it's not listed that way. Um, so we see this as being a benefit of kind of increasing awareness. Um, we already have a bunch of students doing it. And so if we build in a specialization track, that could help with some consistency. Um, faculty advisors would have something more to kind of directly point to, of like, this is what we're planning for you to do. Um, and so that could be a benefit um, for the students and for the program. If we make one specialization track, we'd have to make additional tracks. Um, so we see those other tracks likely formatting into a marine uh, resource conservation and an aquaculture focus. Um, so these are all just possibilities, um, but things that we're kind of thinking on on being the next round of review for the major. So most of the time, the first question that I will ask a student when they're kind of talking to us about uh, what version major they're interested in is, well, do you like getting your feet wet and your hands dirty? And most of the time it's a resounding yes. That is what students are interested in. That's what they want to do with these careers. Um, and so we're really a great school for that. We have a lot of the hands-on um, technical learning opportunities. We want to get students out in the field. We want to get their feet wet. We want them to really experience this um, so that they're ready when they're going to do this in a real job. Um, and so we accomplish this through a lot of different locations around the state. Um, so just kind of want to take you on a brief tour of a lot of the different IFAS facilities. Um, so in Gainesville main campus, um, we have Lake Alice. Um, so a lot of our classes are utilizing that space. It is just about five minutes down the road from where our academic buildings are. Um, and so faculty are bringing equipment, bringing things there, um, transporting students back and forth. And that really gives them a lot of opportunities to practice things, even though it's not necessarily on the ocean, um, they're still getting those real skill sets of like how to manage things. 
Then just northwest of campus, we have our Millhopper campus. Um, so this is where most of our Fisher's Aquatic Science faculty are actually housed. Um, and so that's where they have tanks, ponds, um, and their lab space. Um, and so they have a lot of spaces spread out there. Um, again, it's easy access for students um, that they can be kind of going there, doing research opportunities and volunteering with the programs there. So even though we are in the center of the state, uh, we like to call ourselves a bi-coastal program um, because we really are focusing on getting students out to both the Gulf and the Atlantic coast. Um, there's different types of ecosystems, different types of issues in these areas. And so we're really utilizing the network of IFIS to kind of expand um, and help students understand all of those different issues. So on the Gulf Coast, um, the closest center is Cedar Key, and then off the coast is Seahorse Key. Um, so this is housing the Nature Coast Biological Station. Um, this is about an hour away from main campus. Um, that is about the extent that our field trips typically go on. Um, so they can get to Cedar Key, they can get to Whitney Lab, um, get to like the Georgia border in about that time. Um, and students are learning on all sorts of different bodies of water in that area. Um, so there's a lot of faculty that are doing their research um, in these locations here, um, lots of internships, um, and so lots of kind of people going back and forth. Um, students can typically like hop a ride with somebody um, and get to these locations. Um, so lots of kind of expertise being brought back to the program from here. And then over on the Atlantic coast, we have the Whitney Lab for Marine Bioscience. Um, this area tends to focus a bit more on that biology of marine sciences. Um, and so again, students have lots of opportunities to go there, lots of research being done that they can kind of connect with there. Um, they hold a number of different like symposiums that students are always invited um, to go there as well. Um, and that is in partnership with Marine Land. Um, so we also have some further Southern locations. Um, so the Tropical Aquaculture Lab, is in Ruskin, kind of by Tampa. Um, and so this is an aerial view of them. Um, you can see that good example of all their different ponds and tanks that they're um, working with things. Um, so they, they focus on aquaculture. Um, fun fact, so they developed the blue ting juvenile fish. They bred it in captivity for the release of the Finding Dory movie. And um, so they found from um, Finding Nemo that a lot of consumers wanted to have cuttlefish after that. Um, and there was concern that people would be going out to the reefs and damaging the habitat, trying to capture this fish. Um, so an FAS program was part of developing um, the release of this. Um, and so there are a number of faculty that are in um, the aquaculture lab uh, that are kind of communicating back. Um, they teach remotely and they drive back and forth a couple times a week um, to help students there. So we have a lot of students that are utilizing them as our faculty advisors um, and then like doing research projects with them as well. So back over to the Atlantic Coast, we have the Indian River Regional Education Center. Um, so the rec locations for UF are kind of around the state. Um, and this is another location that has that aquaculture focus. Um, and so we have some faculty teaching remotely from there as well. And then down in the Keys, uh, we have the Florida Keys Marine Lab. Um, so this is not actively staffed by anyone there, um, but a lot of classes and faculty are kind of traveling there for longer trips um, and kind of building off of research opportunities there as well. So what marine science program would be complete without study abroad? This is one of those things that a lot of students are really interested um, and engaged with. Um, and so it's really common. Um, everything would be additional costs, of course. And so we can work with students as to like how they can see that fitting in. Uh, but the curriculum itself fits very well into the, the major itself. Um, so for starters, we have the biology semester of immersion. So this is offered every even spring. And so students have options of core courses that fit directly into the semester of immersion. Um, and so it's just like a directly pull from our curriculum, excuse me, into one of the tracks of that. Um, so that includes marine ecology, invertebrate biodiversity on coral reefs, and ichthyology. 
Um, so students, this is great if they kind of want like a stepping stone to study abroad. Um, some of the courses are what we like to say study way, where they may have lecture here for a bit and then like do a trip around the state or something, um, but they don't kind of have to dive as deep into like a study abroad away for a semester type of trip. Um, but they do still have opportunities in these courses um, that they can go internationally, uh, but it's kind of in a shortened time. So they focus on one course for the first third of the semester, one course for the second, and one course for the last third. Um, so it's a more intense, um, immersive type of atmosphere that students kind of get that opportunity. Um, we also have UF in Quito and Galapagos that's offered every fall, and UF in Cuba, uh, tropical marine and island ecology in the summer. So if a student wanted to, they really could build in like a full year long program. Um, these all are fitting directly into those approved electives. Um, and so students can build directly from UF programs if they like study abroad. However, due to the nature of the program and that it is so flexible and faculty advisor driven, students really have the opportunity to integrate any program that they're interested in into the program. Um, so there are a lot of different study abroad opportunities out there um, with different universities, different programs, um, and students really can choose those and bring them back to a faculty advisor and then kind of work on um, how does that fit in. And so we'll help students a lot with that. Um, same thing with internships or research opportunities. Um, if MC members have anything that they would want a student to like come for a semester um, and earn credits, this is something that students can kind of work on their plan um, and make those sorts of things fit in. So I wanna talk a little bit about how you actually get here to UF um, because I know that can be daunting for a lot of people. Um, so apologize for anyone if you're not working with students kind of at this stage in things. Um, but the, the pros and cons of freshman and transfer admissions are something a lot of students don't think about. Um, and so we just kinda of wanna get this information out there so that students are being encouraged to do the option that's best for them. I am not an admissions counselor. Um, recruiting is part of my position, but um, always check UF admissions for like the most current stats as well. And um, so freshman applications are competitive. There's not really anything we can do about that. It doesn't matter what major a student is planning to take, whatever they declare, they're just getting uh, evaluated in the freshman pool. Um, so something that I like to encourage students is that the numbers that university is like putting out there is the mid 50%. So this means that 25% of students are doing better than those stats and 25% of students don't have as impressive stats. So even if you're not fitting into kind of that number metric, like UF is really looking at the whole picture of applicants. Um, they are trying to find multifaceted people. And so it's not just those academic stats that are important when you're applying. Um, so essays are a really good part for students to kind of try to focus on. Um, working with somebody on an essay can be really helpful. Um, so UF is looking for essays that are unique to you. Um, it shouldn't be something that nobody else could write this essay. Um, it's not like one of the generic storylines of overcoming something. Um, like they want it to be something that's a personal, real story to you, um, but try to like avoid those um, critiques. And so really UF is looking for why students belong here. Uh, what impact will the student bring to the Gator Nation? Um, how are you inputting into the Gator good? Um, you know, what are you gonna do with your contribution while you're here? How do you add to that freshman class? I mean, if students have something about why they can't do this anywhere else, uh, which marine science kind of fits into that, of like, yeah, there's not another good place to go to have all of these opportunities. Um, and so that's why, you know, I belong, why I need to be here at UF. And um, so these are all things to consider. It's really great if students can get in as freshmen. Um, our school has a lot of transfer students, but our marine science class is probably the most evenly balanced between uh, freshmen and transfer. Um, so this gives students longer time to develop those relationships get into research opportunities and kind of get involved with the school and the network that evolves um, sooner. Um, but it's, it's something that we really don't have any like direct control over for students. We'll say if you're working with students like this, having them reach out to someone like us, like academic advisors, um, that is what we are here for. We are here to help with those natures um, and making sure that students kind of understand what their options are. Um, so I want to throw out there too, high school AA has changed this year. 
Um, so if you have any students that are in that sort of situation, um, they are gonna be experiencing a new format this year moving forward. So transfer admission, um, different than the freshman admission, it's really not competitive. It's very streamlined. Um, so basically if you meet the criteria, you're going to get in. So I can't say guaranteed, but it's almost guaranteed. We have seats, we see a demand for this, we need more people, um, our stakeholders want more students coming out of this. Um, so if you meet the criteria, you're basically gonna get in. Um, so it takes an associate of arts, it can be any area of focus, doesn't matter what your AA is in, you just need to have that AA and then a 2.5 GPA in those prerequisite courses. Uh, so these are the same ones that we talked about before. Um, and so this is something that a lot of these courses, um, like you're not gonna be taking them with fisheries aquatic science faculty here on campus. You're in really large lecture halls for a lot of these. Um, and so students, it can just make good sense to kind of stay closer to home, um, can live at home, save on costs. Um, you know, it depends on the student's kind of desires and wishes, but sometimes not coming as a freshman can actually be beneficial for students. Um, it also costs a lot less typically to stay closer to home, um, so that can help students that are in kind of a financial situation. Um, once you do transition to campus, you have the exact same opportunities. Uh, most of our students are kind of getting into the major, getting into the degree um, at that junior level. And so like it really doesn't feel disconnect. We have a lot of students entering at that junior level. Um, and so it just kind of fits well in. That's right about the time that you get to the small school atmosphere of our majors anyways. Um, so it's a great time to join. Um, and I always wanna stress to students that you end up with the same degree and there's not going to be anything kind of showcasing that you transferred in or not. Um, so you have the same upper level courses and really have the same opportunities once you're here. So just to kind of summarize, our marine science program here at UF has a strong base of research. Um, we are really relying heavily on the expertise of IFIS and Sea Grant and all of our faculty and just kind of the network of the University of Florida system. Um, we really focus on the hands-on active learning, we are giving students skill sets that are based on the career demands. They have high contact with faculty and experts as they develop their plans, and it's a personalized curriculum so that students are really getting what they want. So our school offers the number two best value public college education, all the benefits of a small school but within the resources of a top 10 university. So that's my presentation today. Um, this is my contact information, um, a link to our Marine Sciences website. Um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I've also developed a YouTube playlist that highlights some of these different um, study abroad and research opportunities students are doing. And so thank you all very much for your time. Yes, thank you so much, Grace, for taking the time to tell us all about that. I, I mean, I wish I knew that when I was going into college because it's a game changer. Um, now here is where we take questions that any of you would have. All right, so is this degree in marine biology online? So yeah, so a lot of students are looking for marine biology. It's not marine biology, it's marine sciences. Um, so we feel that that's more inclusive. Um, and so, um, you know, biology would kind of fit in the other one closer. Um, there is nothing currently that's in the online program. Um, UF Online is still very small um, compared to the number of majors offered. Um, so we aren't offering anything in the distance at the undergraduate level. Um, there is that opportunity at the graduate level. Thank you. And our next question. Um, so it's, you know, we all try to persuade kids all the time about going to a small school first. Do you have anything you've done that speaks to this? I think letting students know of this opportunity. Um, I mean, that's where I always kind of say like, I can't say guaranteed, but it's kind of guaranteed that like we have seats and you are going to get in. There's a lot of benefits of like, do you want to be in this big lecture hall for chemistry or would you rather take it 
with somebody locally. Um, and so just kind of making sure students like see that pathway as being really accessible to them um, and that they, you know, aren't like missing out on something. Um, you can still get scholarships, you can still do the same research projects, um, like just kind of being on top of it. Um, students really have like all the benefits of that. So I just try to put that information there for them um, so that when they kind of have those different triggers that may push them one way or the other, um, they feel like they're still getting a really good quality option out of both ways. Would anybody else like to ask any questions? So curious more about your advanced degrees and um, is all that linked on that website as well for their graduate schools? So that um, is going to take you directly to our undergraduate page. Um, but from there, if you kind of go to the Marines or the Fisheries Aquatic Sciences program and then look at the degrees offered, um, there's all that information there. Um, so I'm an undergraduate advisor. We do have a graduate advisor and then we have like an online coordinator. So depending on what like version you were looking for, one of them would have more particular information about those. Um, but yeah, UF is Probably. really... Sorry, the online uh, one is what I'm, I'm okay. interested in. Yeah, um, so yeah, UF has really tried to kind of branch out to serving that continuing education population. Um, and so making those graduate programs in like the online format um, and those certificates, like if you don't actually need a master's, but you just want some further education. Um, I did the, the natural resource policy certificate um, kind of as I was transitioning to this position. Um, and so, you know, I did that while I was working full time. And so they're kind of designed around that. Um, and so find a lot of other people around the state and around we have people around the country um, in mind that were, you know, working on that. Um, but yeah, I Thank don't you. know a lot about that, like formally. I know it from my experience. <laughs> <with them. laughs> no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any posters or information in writing that we're able to post in our classrooms about this program? Yes. So um, we have um, a number of different flyers um, that are kind of linked on our website. Um, and so love to share those with people if you want to have them around. Um, normally, if Fancy was happening, I am there with my binders and I have um, some things that I like hand out to people and stuff. Um, so if you see me at a conference anytime or thing, um, we have um, like the little college banners and those sorts of stuff to go up. Um, yeah, if anybody has suggestions for us, um, we are trying to grow and expand this program. And so we want opportunities for students. Um, we find it really valuable to get in front of educators because we recognize the really high value that you bring to students. Um, and so, you know, we have students that will ask them like, well, how did you get into this? And it's like, oh, that one teacher like gave me the push that like, this is a realistic dream and I can do this. Um, and so we really see the value of getting you all the information and then you disseminate to the students. That makes sense because you know them and you know like what's going to be best. Um, and so we're here as a teamwork. Um, we're a small school. Um, my email is there. If you ever want to ask me questions or have students come our way, um, we are really here to serve you in that way. Great. Thank you. If we don't have any more questions, I could close this out unless someone wants to squeeze one, one more in. We've got plenty of time. I see. I see Todd's face popped up. I'm trying to think if he has a question. <laughs> Do you need me to unmute you? Would that be quicker? <laughs> um, no. I was. I had asked the question about uh, the graduate school stuff, but then I was also um, wondering what. Uh, what she had studied so what was your what was your experience as far as like if you were to talk like as we put this forward to students as, as an opportunity what would you say were like your top three experiences 
Um, so I actually, I'm originally from Minnesota. As we were talking at the start, I was like, oh, Minnesota. Oh, they're, they're talking about Montana. Um, but so I went to a small liberal arts school. Um, I was actually planning on, I entered declaring a religious and technical theater major. Um, and I dropped down to technical theater and then missed science and added on environmental science major. Um, and so if I had been at UF, I would have been a natural resource conservation major because I was basically looking for the least amount of chemistry and most field courses that I could do. Not the best career advice, um, not what I would suggest a student, but like I was at that point, like I totally get that. Um, so yeah, I, I think I was the kind of student that I liked to develop my own curriculum. And so these like approved electives lists and the planned electives is really my style. Um, I know some students that seems a bit overwhelming. And so that's where like we kind of help guide them through that. Um, but I feel really strongly that this major lets students determine you know, if this is where you want to go, like, we will help get you there. Like, this is why we have expertise of people that are going to make sure you don't just go take those random classes that, like, I took, but, like, you're going to be qualified for what you want to do out of this. Um, so it's a nice blend of it's got that flexibility, but it also has that structure that, like, students don't graduate with just this hodgepodge of, I don't know what I want to do. Um, yeah, so that's, I think that's maybe the downside of my education. Um, I didn't understand undergraduate research until way too late in my game. Um, and so kind of having some of those really entry level classes in that junior year that are kind of laying this out um, is really good that students see that and just kind of the atmosphere at UF of like, well, of course you should be involved with research. Um, kind of help students to get some of that like practical real experience. Um, and sometimes students like, oh yeah, research is not for me. Um, students come in thinking they're pre-vet and quickly determine they're not pre-vet. Um, I feel like that's half of my job is talking people out of being pre-vet. Uh, but that's, that's like the freshman. I'm like, that's nice. We'll see how you feel in a year. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's, it's a personal thing. And so students really have those opportunities in the majors because they are smaller departments um, to kind of, kind of feel that out with everybody. Do you like chemistry now? I don't like chemistry okay. now. Um, I mean, it's really cool. Um, and I think, yeah, if I had understood it more, maybe I would have gone somewhere with it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I passed chemistry. Good, good, <laughs> That good. was my goal. Um, but yeah, no, our, I had to take him one and two in my degree. Um, our NRC students only have to like take baby chem one, so I would have. No organic, it. no, okay. No, yeah. Um, so organic is not required in the marine sciences major, but a lot of the faculty advise students to do it. Like, again, it kind of depends what you want to go into. Um, and that's where like the pre-vet students, of course, have to take organic. Um, but yeah, no, that's, there's a lot of things. But yeah, I think I was just like, how can I get outside and learn about stuff? Like, that's what I wanted. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, well, thank you all so much. <laughs> That's funny. I don't like chemistry. And someone just said, organic is so fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're crying at midnight, but, you know, well. If you get past the memorization of all the stuff, it's fun. <laughs> but it's the memorization that kills. Oh, yeah. Well, Grace, thank you so much for taking the time to answer everyone's questions and taking the time to be here today, even though we could not meet in person, this was still very informative, I feel, and I hope some other educators also feel the same way. Um, here is where people are gonna start leaving me. Don't leave me yet. Just give me like two more seconds, that's it. Um, I wanna thank you all for coming out today. And before you go and leave, don't forget to renew your FEMZ membership. We know that many of you renew your membership automatically this time of year, as it's an option that's included in your conference fees, but there was no conference. So without your regular conference fees, you're not automatically renewed. Therefore, you don't get the really awesome benefits and information we have to offer. So in the chat box, I have our website for you to go and renew your membership so you can stay current. If you absolutely enjoyed today's session, we hope you'll consider donating to us so we can consider continue to provide you awesome content. Our regular annual conference is a great source of funding for our organization.
And unfortunately, we can't, we were not able to recover all the costs that went into putting on what would have been our in-person conference. So we thank you for coming to our virtual conference and allowing us to continue to put on these wonderful events. Um, if you feel giving, you are more than welcome to donate into our platform that is now in the chat box. And then last but not least, today is Friday. It's our final day of presentations. You joined us at noon. Now please join us at four o'clock with Dita O'Boyle and Janine Windsor um, for Sharks by Salinity. If you haven't registered and if you're interested in registering, that link is also now in the chat box for you to register for four o'clock. Thank you again so much for coming. Grace, thank you again so much for your presentation and thank you all for coming this afternoon. Hopefully we'll see you at four.